Hello friends and welcome to church. My name is Pastor Bruce Dickerson and I'm the lead pastor here at Jerome Church. I'm so excited that you've joined us this morning for worship. We'll be continuing our sermon series entitled, So Be It. It is a series based on what is officially known as a covenant prayer in the Wesleyan tradition or more commonly, the Wesleyan covenant prayer. In 1775, John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, introduced a covenant service as an important part of the spiritual life of the Methodist societies. Now, a covenant is a contract or an agreement between God and the church or an individual. Now, this renewal service was a time for the Methodists to gather annually, usually around the first of the year, in a time of self-examination, reflection, and dedication, wholly giving themselves and dedicating themselves to uh, renewing the covenant they had with God. Now, in the final week of this series, here in a couple weeks, we will come together and join in a Wesleyan covenant service as a way of renewing our covenant with God. However, I felt it was important to understand what we were agreeing to do to the contract between us and God. And so over last week and the next couple weeks before the service, we'll be looking at different parts of the Wesleyan Covenant service. Let's now join together in worship, praise, and song. But just don't get it right Where I talk a talk that I don't walk And miss the moments right before my eyes Somebody with a hurt that I could have helped Somebody with a hand that I could have helped When I just can't see past myself Lord, help me be
I'm Casey Baker, and I'm the nursery coordinator here at Jerome Church. This month, kids are learning about Jesus in early life and ministry in a fun series called A Day at the Museum. Learning together about these stories helps us all experience and follow God in news and real ways. Each week, the kids can join in our in-person learning program or on our on-demand videos. Every Sunday, we gather in person for a kids' programming at Jerome Church here at the building at 9 and at 10.30 a.m., where the kids and leaders play games, sing songs, make crafts, and meet new friends and learn more about the Bible. Kids can also tune in in a weekly on-demand video that we share every Sunday to hear about our Bible story and learn more about the big idea. A new video this is available on sunday to watch on our on demand at jerome church on our youtube channel or in the jerome kids facebook group and in our church center app 
We love to learn and grow with you and your family in all the ways that you are connecting with our family ministry staff and volunteers. Now let's hear a message from Pastor Bruce as we continue our stories about a bold and powerful prayer. Would you pray with me, friends? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our Savior and our Redeemer. There are two scripture passages this morning, both from the Old Testament. The first one is from Job chapter 1, verses 13 through 22. One day, when Job's son and daughter were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby, and the Sabines attacked and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The fire of God fell from the heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down on your, on your camels and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, Your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the older brother's house, when suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them, and they are dead and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground and worshiped and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. And our second scripture passage is from Micah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead my case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear, you mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth, for the Lord has a case against his people. He is lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. My people, remember what Balak king of Moab plotted and what Balaam son of Beor answered? Remember your journey from Shittim and Gilgal. What you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. What, what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, last week, we looked at the first three lines of the Wesleyan Covenant prayer. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Within these lines, we discovered what it means as Christian disciples to sacrifice and suffer by ceasing all resistance to God's will and way and fully subjecting ourselves to God's will regardless of what it brings. This week, we will continue our series by looking at the next four lines of the Wesleyan Covenant Prayer. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee, or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. Much like last week's section of this prayer, there's another set of overarching themes, and these themes are honor 
and humility. Now, when we think of being honored or the word honored, we think of being held in a high regard or in great esteem. Uh, in society, we heap praise on individuals for their act or their accomplishments. Uh, who do we consider heroes in our lives? Who are the actors and uh, politicians that we may hold up? Now in the church, we think about those saints who have surrounded us or that have gone before us that have held true to the faith or are an example of what it means to live fully into God's mission. These are people that we hold with great esteem, we honor. Some of us may even be honored for participating in God's mission. However, that is not the only option. Honor is just one half of that equation. Because when following God's mission, we may also face humility. Now, what humility is, is humility is to have a modest or low view of oneself. But oftentimes, many people don't have humility. They actually have and seek great honor, and sometimes they are humbled. Now, to be humbled is to be brought low, and we tend to scorn or look down on people who have been humbled. Uh, we actually say things like, man, they got what they deserved. Then we have people who just have a natural humility about them. They are naturally humble in the way they act, the way they live. But yet when we seek those people, we look down on them also. We look at them as just commonplace, as uh, someone of little significance or very little importance. However, when either of these are accepted, either being humbled and accepting it, or being humble, showing humility. This shows a lack of pride. And that lack of pride is an experience. That lack of pride is true humility. And for a Christian, this true humility is a virtue. It's actually almost a form of holiness. And it should be lived into because when you are humble, when you show humility, regardless of how you got there through natural ways or being humbled through serving or in life, it actually levels the playing field so that we are nothing more or nothing less than the people around us. Now, when we take part in God's mission to restore the world to God's intended wholeness, we are honored and we are humbled. You see, because in either lesson, we have to acknowledge that it's God's work being done, not our own. Now, with prayer sections like, let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee, we can see honor and we can also see humility in all the following statements. Now, since our time of creation, we have been given the task of being stewards of God's creation. So praying, let me be employed by thee, is an acknowledgement that we want to be, uh, be used for our blessings, for our skills, for our talents. We want to be productive and are part of God's mission, however God chooses to partner with us. But when we take into account the other half of that prayer, or laid aside for thee, the prayer is a little more difficult to take since we are created in God's image deliberately with purpose and meaning. To be laid aside then would mean to be not meeting that purpose, to be not meeting that meaning. We are therefore employed or laid aside at God's discretion to accomplish God's work. Let me be exalted for thee or brought low for thee. To pray this part of the prayer means we acknowledge that we are willing to accept any position that God chooses for us, high or low, in order to be used by God for God's mission, to once again, to push towards, to bring about God's meant wholeness for the world. In the book, uh, The Wesley Prayer Challenge, 21 Days to a Closer Walk with Christ, author Chris Folmsby writes, deeply committed disciples don't choose roles, 
based on possible outcomes. We simply say yes to God. Deeply committed disciples know that there is tremendous worth found in the process of doing and what we learn from the process. Deeply committed disciples also know that doing God's work and completing assignments God gives to us is its own unique prize. If outside fulfillment is the objective that drives us, we are doing it for the wrong reason. Now, let me be full, let me be empty. Now, I believe almost everyone enjoys feeling happy or a fullness when they are able to contribute to God's mission, particularly when they find what I call your sweet spot, that particular way that you love to serve, that you feel it's the reason you were created. Uh, like we are created just for that one thing, that one purpose. Now that could be working in children's ministry. That could be feeding the hungry. It could be interacting with our youth. It could be international missions. There are so many ways to serve. It might even be ordained ministry. This is my sweet spot. But yet there's another half. We, when we find that we feel full and complete and we hope all of God's work for us is like this. Like we want it to make us feel full all the time. However, that's not the reality. There are times when, when and where the work makes us feel unsatisfied, unhappy. There are times at the end of the day we may feel empty, not because we poured ourselves out with joy, but because it was dragged out of us. Now, for some, this may be the same thing. There are people who are not meant to work in children's ministry or to be on the leadership team or to uh, serve in other capacities around the church, both inside and outside the church. Like, I, I am not a natural administrator. I love teaching and preaching and small group relationships and building relationships and going out and meeting with the community. That's what I love to do. I was never meant to sit in an office. I had an opportunity earlier this week to go to my wife's office and work for a little bit. And it's a, it's a little bit more of a formal office compared to how we uh, run the church office. And I actually told somebody, I feel like I was getting hives. It, it felt so far, I felt like I was sprouting a tie. It's just not my sweet spot. I actually felt drained from working in that environment. Yet to pray this part of the prayer acknowledges that there will be time when God calls us to serve God's mission and we will be in our sweet spot or we may be left feeling empty. I have to take the highs and the joys of ordained ministry that I love and mix in the administration, the numbers and the letters and the formality of it. But when we pray it, the end goal is the same, that we must serve faithfully, without needing to feel the fruits of our labor, whether good or bad, because that's not why we do it. Folmsby reminds us of this about serving. In the end, you choose to love anyways because you know that this is how the world will recognize its disciples, by how we love one another and by how we choose to live an illumined life in a dark world. That means we do it because we're called to do it by God, to serve, to partner with him for his ultimate mission. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. Now, when I think about this statement, I, I must admit, I went to the second half first. Uh, yeah, it's the more negative, but I have to admit that I don't know what it's like to have nothing. I have no concept of that. Uh, I've always had enough, or in many cases, more than enough. I've always had clothes and shoes and a warm place during the winter and a cool place during the summer. Uh, I, I've always had that. I've always had enough or more than enough. And even when we're talking about nothing here, I think we're going to an extreme. Even when I've met with uh, 
people who are homeless and all they have is the clothes and the backpack on their back with what belongings they have. They have something. Now it may be next to nothing, but they have something. I've been to parts of the world like Haiti where after the hurricanes, there were stories of what it looked like to have nothing. But I can't relate. I've never had that. But I'll also admit that I haven't had everything that I've wanted. I've never had all things either. So I've always had enough, and I thank God for that. And that's actually what I strive for. It's uh, not to focus on what I don't have, uh, and it's not to worry about having nothing. I, I believe God strives for us to live simply to have enough. In some cases, to live simply so others can simply live. Something that we all can strive for. But when we pray this part of the prayer, it's an acknowledgement that through serving God's mission, whether we end up with all things, enough, or nothing, our focus should not be on the trap of chasing stuff, but we will be content with what comes through the yielding of God's will. Now, our first scripture passage from Job talks about that specifically. It says, Job received messengers after finding out that some of his children were eating and drinking at the older brother's house. And the first messenger came and said, your, your, you know, your crops have been destroyed and your sheep have uh, been destroyed and all your servants are gone. And the last messenger comes and, and says, even the house that your children were in was destroyed. It's all gone. Everything that you have worked for, everything. Yet, in his unhappiness, in his, in his grief, he rips off his robe and he shaves his head and he falls to the ground in worship. And he says, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Job understood that it's not ours in the first place. It's God's to give and God's to take away. God has blessed us in so many wonderful ways. And it's an acknowledgement that God as we follow God's plan, that's the ultimate thing. That's what we need to do. We need to follow God's plan, trust in God, not strive for the things, but praise God in all circumstances, because there's a chance that you may receive blessings upon blessings, or there's a chance that you may lose things when you follow God, and it's okay. God's got it. And finally, I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. Now this final statement is an acknowledgement of the statements that have come before, that regardless of the outcomes of our participation in God's mission, we generously and wholeheartedly with an open hand and has our author says, an enthusiastic spirit, submit to God's will. It's an acknowledgement that has Christian disciples that God's plans, wants, desires, mission is greater than our own. But we have to question then, what does God desire of us? And our Micah passage gives out an idea. It sets up a court scene where God is calling down and saying, People of Israel, you have wronged me. Look at all the things that I have done for you. Yet look at the transgressions you still point towards me. And Israel asks, 
What shall I come before him with? Burnt offerings with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Yet the scripture goes on to say, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. To live like Jesus taught us to live and showed us to live, and that being the plan to bring God's mission of wholeness to the world to fruition. May it be so with each of us. Thanks be to God and amen.
It's good to be with you in worship today. My name is Sarah Merriweather and I'm the Executive Director here at Jerome. Today we are continuing our new series as we kick off this new year exploring a bold and powerful prayer together. If you would like to receive a prayer card for this new series and you are not able to attend in-person worship in January, please check the box to receive a prayer card when you complete your Connect card online today. I want to invite you now to open up your Church Center app so that you can connect to the tools for ministry and missions at Jerome Church right now and continue to do so throughout the week. If you don't have the app yet, you can scan the QR code that's on the screen and follow the instructions below to connect with us. While you're in the app, please be sure to check into worship or complete your Connect card today and take some time to explore all of the opportunities in your app as you find your ways to worship, serve inside and outside of the church building, and grow spiritually through small groups and studies. One way that you can serve our community is by volunteering for Upward Sports on Saturdays in the months of January and February. This weekend, we welcomed hundreds of basketball players, cheerleaders, and their families for game day. We need your help to volunteer with this ministry as we reach out into our community and introduce kids and families to Jesus through sports. There are opportunities to serve as a referee, as a greeter, at the concession stand, on the tech team, with setup and cleanup, and much more. You can find more information and the link to sign up in today's video description. And if you're looking for ways to grow spiritually and connect to others through groups, there are two opportunities that you can participate in this month. The first is called The Bible Year, and this is an ongoing study with daily readings and weekly videos on Amplify Media that will take you through the entire Bible in 2022. You can start at any time. Daily readings are available in the Jerome Church Facebook group. The second opportunity is a brand new study geared toward women that will meet on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. for six weeks, beginning on January 25th, going through March 1st. This study is called Determined and is a study of the Gospel of Luke and is all about making every moment count as we live an abundant life together through Christ. You can learn more and register for this study through the links in today's video description in the app and on our website. I hope that you will join me for this study and maybe invite a friend or two to join you as well. Another opportunity to serve this month is by providing items for our monthly missions drive. During this month of January, we are collecting shampoo and conditioner for the Common Ground Free Store in Delaware. You can drop off items to Jerome Church all month long or shop the Amazon wish list to have items shipped directly to the church. The wish list link is available in today's video description. Together, the people of Jerome Church are living the mission of loving God and loving people through the life-changing missions and ministries of this church fueled by your regular and generous giving. If you are giving today, you can give electronically through the Give tab in the Church Center app, or if you're giving for the first time, you can text the word GIVE to 614-587-7871. Giving is also available through automatic withdrawal by contacting the church office, or you can mail a check to Jerome Church at the address below. Now, as we close out our time of worship together, our choir is going to lead us in our closing hymn. Thank you. 
It's been a wonderful time of worship together, and I want to say thank you for making this worship time a part of your week, whether you were joining us live on Sunday morning or watching later on demand. Be sure to connect with us online this week through social media and the Church Center app so that you can continue to worship, serve, and grow together in this new year. Have a blessed week, friends.